The Denmark Marine Voyage seeks to fill a bit hole of our, in our understanding by collecting, for the first time, observations of the ocean next to one of the fastest retreating glaciers in East Antarctica. If it completely melted, the Denmark Glacier alone would add 1.5 meters to global sea level. We want to find out how vulnerable the Denmark Glacier is to the warming ocean and the likelihood of it making a larger and faster contribution to celebrate rise within the next few decades. We knew that Noena was an exceptionally capable vessel, but to be able to put it to the test in this voyage and see it achieve and perform as well as it has, has been really gratifying. There's a really strong current right against the ice shell and we still don't know what that means for uh, how much ocean heat gets into the ice shell. Um, and at the same time, we've seen uh, cooler waters than we were expecting at depth and warmer waters um, within the midst of the water column, which could explain why we're seeing so little sea ice this season. There are no images from this part of the Antarctic coastline. So this, this is complete voyage of discovery stuff for us. And it's an enormously important step in building these models to produce these maps. in phytoplankton because it takes up CO2 and it's also the base of the food web in the Southern Ocean. One of the things we were interested in was the difference between the east and the western regions because from satellites you can tell there's a bit more in theory on the west compared to the east but when we got there we couldn't really see difference in how much phytoplankton biomass there is. What we could see though is that pretty deep in the water column we could have phytoplankton growing down to 300 meters deep which is really surprising because phytoplankton needs light to grow and down to 300 meters there's no light. So we're trying to understand what was driving that growth of phytoplankton that far deep in the water column. It's 
first time that we are able to track on their development and like see like how they grow their wings and also their shell. Yeah, this is the first time. collected a surprisingly large number of sea pigs, which are a kind of sea cucumber, um, a, a very large number of those, uh, isopods, which are little crustaceans that live on the sea floor, um, a really large diversity of, of a broad suite of marine life, and likely some new species to science. There's very little we know about the animal biodiversity of the region. So we're looking in surface waters as well as throughout the water column all the way down to the sea floor to see what lives there. seeing these animals in their natural habitat like we, we've never seen it here before like oh <gasps> very important to understand the dynamics of what's happening uh, at the microphysical level so that we can see what's happening on a climate scale. The voyage has been a tremendous success and exceeded all of our expectations. We've managed to achieve a sampling across the region beyond what we had thought might have been reasonable. So I think the Nuina has been perfect, perfect platform to do that work. Um, the fact that we could do rock dredging, sediment coring, oceanography, beam troll, well we did everything really, everything you can do on a voyage. So it's been pretty impressive. It's absolutely essential we gather all the information because what happens in the Antarctic ice sheet is critical for Australia's future and the welfare of the global community. <laughs>